Okay, we are back with module four today. Module four is classifying matter and its changes. So in this module, we're gonna be learning about further ways to classify matter because we've already talked about how matter can be elements or compounds. Now we're taking a look at a few other ways to classify or group together matter to understand it better. And then of course, we get to talk about classifying its changes, which means chemical reactions. First, matter can be classified as a pure substance or a mixture. Let's start with pure substances. A pure substance contains only one element or a compound. Okay, an example would be pure oxygen, which actually is not in this room, and we will talk about that later. But pure oxygen would be an example of a pure substance because it's only one element, oxygen. Uh, you can also have compounds that are pure substances. Table salt is all sodium chloride. Baking soda uh, is like NaHCO3 would be the chemical formula for it. It's made up of a compound. Uh, aluminum foil. This would be aluminum. Another example of an element that's a pure substance. Uh, water. Is water a pure substance? Well, we heard from our last lab that even distilled water is only 99% pure. So there are some impurities in it, but thankfully, still good to drink. Oh, so refreshing. And fingernail polish I brought because looks to me like this is a pure substance. It's all the same throughout. Don't ask me what compound is in there, but a good color nonetheless. Okay, so those are examples of pure substances. When you have a pure substance, you cannot uh, separate, okay, let's say a pure substance that is a compound. Pure substance that is a compound cannot be separated. cannot be separated into individual elements. A pure substance that is a compound cannot be separated into individual elements based on the elements individual properties because they don't retain individual properties after forming A compound. Wow, what a mouthful. Whew, sorry about that long bit of notes. Okay, so what did I say? I said that a pure substance that is a compound cannot be separated into its individual elements based on the element's individual properties because they don't retain their individual properties after forming a compound. So take a look on page 100 in your book. Here we have a sample of Here we have a sample of sulfur, which is the yellow powder, and iron, which is the black powder. So if we mix those together, is that going to be a pure substance? No, it is not, because we can still see that the elements of sulfur and iron are still retaining their individual properties. I can look at that pile of sulfur and iron there and see what is yellow is sulfur and what is black is the iron. So it's just mixed together, but it hasn't actually formed a compound. So that would not be an example of a pure substance. Okay, so in a pure substance, you cannot separate out the individual components or the individual elements based on the elements properties because they no longer have their own elements properties. Now they are a compound and they have new properties based on that compound. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so those are pure substances. Next, we're gonna talk about mixtures. Here are your notes for uh, 
Mixtures. So matter can be a pure substance, like we just heard, or matter can be a mixture. A mixture is a substance that contains different elements or compounds. For example, air is a mixture. Now, before I inhaled and exhaled and said that that was pure oxygen, but thankfully it is not, because if we were to breathe in pure oxygen, it actually could cause us some damage if we had too much ox oxygen. And so the Lord, when he created the air for us to breathe, diluted it with mostly nitrogen, a gas that is non-toxic and does not react at all with our bodies. So we breathe it in and we breathe it out. And its purpose is just to dilute the oxygen. The book tells us that if we had too much oxygen, we could have lung damage, chest pain, even blindness. And very interesting, if we had a 1% increase in oxygen in our air outside, that would lead to a 70% increase in the chance for forest fires. Can you believe that? So thankfully, God knew what he was doing when he created the air around us, and he put just the right mixture into the air for us to breathe and for the other living things on our planet. So air is a mixture. Um, mixtures can be physically separated based on their individual properties. So back to the book, this was a mixture. This is not a pure substance. This is a mixture of sulfur and iron. And the two could be physically separated based on individual properties. In the book, it shows a magnet separating the two because iron is magnetic and sulfur is not, okay? Um, it could also be separated if you had a teeny tiny little tweezers, you could separate it based on its color because you can still see that the sulfur is yellow and the iron is black. And so you can see that the two are maintaining their separate identities. They're just mixed together, making it a mixture. Now, underneath mixture, we can also talk about two different classifications. First, A is a homogeneous mixture. Now, you may have also heard this pronounced homogeneous mixture, and you can say either one, but the book spells it out as homogeneous, and because I am a firstborn child, I am a strict rule follower, and so I will say homogeneous. So a homogeneous mixture has a composition that is the same throughout, okay? We know the prefix homo means same, so that should help you remember. Pretty easy, a homogeneous mixture is the same throughout. For example, chicken broth. If you have a big pot of chicken broth and you take a scoop, a ladle full over here, put it in a bowl, compare it to a ladle full over here, put it over in this bowl, they're going to look the same. Same color, same taste, um, no little pieces of anything really floating around, right? If we're talking about like straight chicken broth. Um, compare that with the other possibility, which is a heterogeneous or heterogeneous uh, composition. Again, I'm going to follow what the book says because I'm a firstborn. So a heterogeneous mixture has a composition that is different throughout. For example, chicken noodle soup. If I have a big pot of chicken noodle soup and I get a ladle full over here and give it to my son Jake, he's going to say, yay, my chicken noodle soup has just chicken broth and noodles, nothing else. And then I get a ladle full over here and put it in Sam's bowl, and Sam says, no fair, my chicken noodle soup has pieces of celery and onion and chicken and one lousy noodle. So you see, the composition throughout the chicken noodle soup is not the same, it is different, it is a heterogeneous mixture. Very unfortunate when you are a mother trying to scoop chicken noodle soup. Hmm. Anyway, now we're gonna go take a look at some ingredients in my fridge and see if we can classify them as pure substances, mixtures, homogeneous, heterogeneous. Let's do it. Okay, so here's my fridge, which I'm actually kind of mad at right now because all of a sudden my button for ice won't work. But I'm first focusing on the water here. <laughs> Whoops, I actually pushed it. Okay, I'm first focusing on the water here because what is water? Is it a mixture or is it a pure substance? That's right, it is a mixture. It is not a pure substance. It has some um, impurities in it, even distilled water does. 
Okay, open this up and let's see. What do we have in here? Okay, some uh, fire sauce. Would we call this a pure substance or would we call this a mixture? This is a pure substance. I don't think that you could separate out the individual components of this fire sauce. I think it is one compound and uh, I think you'd have to perform some sort of chemical reaction to, to un unmix it. Okay, how about this chunky garlic right here? Pure substance or mixture? Um, I'm going to say this is a mixture because uh, it's probably got some water in there mixed up with some chunks of garlic and some mashed up garlic. Mm hmm Yep, I'm right. Actually, there's some oil in there. So that would be a mixture. Okay, so would it be homogeneous? Oh, excuse me. Would it be homogeneous or heterogeneous? See, you can see the chunks in there making it heterogeneous. You go for a sample of that versus another sample another day, and they're not going to be exactly the same. You might have more chunks in one mixture than the other. Okay, how about ranch dressing over here? I see some a ranch dressing packet. This would be a mixture, and I think this would also be heterogeneous because uh, different samples of it would have different amounts of those little spices, those little dots that you see. All right. Um, milk. Mommy. Milk would be a homogeneous mixture Mommy. if you buy homogeneous, Mommy. homogenized Mommy. milk because they've Mommy. they've mixed it up for you. Oh, how about you? Mommy. Are you are you a mixture or are you a substance? Mommy. Say I'm a mixture, and I'm heterogeneous because a slice of me up here is going to be a lot different than a slice of me down here. Okay, can you say bye, little homogeneous mixture? Mm. Goodbye. Mm. That's going to have to do it for today. Bye. Okay, I'm back, and I have lost the adorable, but very unkempt little girl from before. Uh, she is now watching a cartoon. So let's take another look in my fridge. Okay, let's go to the top up here with uh, some pesto. Would you call this a pure substance or a mixture? Definitely a mixture. Definitely heterogeneous. It is different throughout. You can see the different colors. All right, how about this whipped yogurt? Uh, I would call this, I would say this is probably a pure substance because the only way you'd separate out the individual components is through some sort of chemical reaction. So that I'd say is a pure substance. Um, the orange juice, um, well, I can tell that, tell that more has settled on the bottom than on the top. You wanna to give that a good shake so you can see the contents swirling around in there. So that would be a mixture, and that would be heterogeneous. It is not the same throughout. How about my half and half? My half and half would be similar to my milk in that it is um, has been homogenized so that it is the same throughout. So that'd be a homogeneous mixture. Okay, how about a strawberry? A strawberry would be similar to really any other piece of fruit or vegetable, like a tomato or um, green onion, whatever. Um, it is a mixture because there's some seeds in there. It's not all the same, right? And a slice out of part of the strawberry would have a different amount of seeds than a different slice of the strawberry. So that would be a heterogeneous mixture as well. Uh, can I find any other pure substances in here? Pure substance, pure substance, pure substance, pure substance. Not finding an example of a pure substance. Oh, maybe mayonnaise. I think mayonnaise would probably be a pure substance because that has been completely mixed together into I think probably one compound actually no I actually disagree with myself I think when there's a whole bunch of different ingredients listed you got to call it a mixture right so never mind on that being a pure substance I don't know what else would be a pure substance in here mostly mixtures are what I'm seeing inside of my refrigerator I said that the fire sauce was a pure substance, so we're just gonna go with that. Um, yep, so there you have it. The best examples of pure substances would be um, the baking things that I showed you before, which would be, oh, there are, uh, here's an example, baking powder. Baking powder is one compound. I open that up, there's only one compound in there. That is a pure substance. All right, so there are some examples of mixtures, pure substances, and within mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures, and homogeneous mixtures. Thank goodness my kitchen was fairly clean. I'm going to keep it focused here so you can't see any more mess.